empowering young people for mission through the Give Them the Keys initiative and educating young people in Timor Leste and Bangladesh. These stories and more coming up next. Hello and welcome to Mission 360, coming to you today from Ayutthaya, Thailand. Now this used to be the ancient capital of the Siamese Kingdom and today we know this country as Thailand, but for some 400 years this capital had its glory days, but it didn't last forever. As we know, kingdoms crumble and turn into dust, but the Word of God stands forever. And with the church we need to make sure that it never becomes a ruin that we need to refocus and keep our focus on mission constantly. That's why it's important to pass on the torch to our young people. And on today's program, we'll be talking about Give Them the Keys, an initiative to empower them for mission. We have a lot more coming up. First up, let's travel to Timor-Leste, where we meet the only pastor in that country. Timor-Leste is the newest nation of the 21st century. After many years of conflict, this nation now has independence. Although a country with religious freedom, Timor-Leste is hesitant to accept new groups that could potentially cause conflict and a divide in this nation once again. Timor-Leste is 98% Catholic, therefore much of the country operates on Saturday and shuts down on Sunday. This makes it difficult for Adventist children who cannot attend school on Saturday in order to observe the biblical day of rest. Every week, Adventist students have a tough choice to make. To miss lectures on Sabbath could mean embarrassment, a beating, and often being expelled from school. Nathania, like many other young ones, attends a public school. She studies hard and strives for the best grades. She has no other option but to do her very best because she spends one less day in school than the rest of her class. Nathania has made a bold decision to respect the Sabbath and attend church. Nathania's family taught her from a young age to love Jesus and read the Bible. From the Bible, Nathania and her sister Lavina learned to do good and to love others. They also learned to pray for the things that concern the heart. Today, Lavina and Nathania are praying about school. They have explained to the teachers why they cannot come to school on Saturdays, but it has been difficult for them. This time again, they have been threatened to be expelled from school for them, this is unthinkable. They know they need an education, and they love going to school with the other kids. After daily worship, the girls leave for school. As the school day goes on, it appears that the teacher forgot they missed school this past Saturday. The girls come home, thankful that one more time, Jesus has helped them. This family has been praying for more than 10 years that an Adventist school could open here in Timor-Leste. This school will accommodate Adventist students as well as other faith groups who cannot attend school on Saturday. A new school would also be an opportunity for children who do not have the privilege of an education, as schools here in Timor-Leste are operating over capacity. Pastor Inacio da Costa is the only ordained Timorese Seventh-day Adventist pastor in the entire country. He has been working hard to start a Seventh-day Adventist school in Timor-Leste. He has time and again requested assistance and funds for this project. Fortunately, this quarter, Adventist church members around the world will join hands to help make it possible for Timor-Leste to open the first Seventh-day Adventist school in their country. I'm in Bangkok, Thailand with Greg and Amy Whitset from the Center for East Asia Religions and also their son, Tyler. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Tyler, I'm going to start with you this time. Um, tell me, what is the most challenging thing about living in a totally different culture? The most challenging thing for me is um, just that you have to learn um, how to act in society. And when we came here, I had to learn how to um, learn a new way of social life 
to how to hang out with my friends, what's cool, what's not cool, and um, also being away from family, that can also be quite hard. Yeah, now you've been in Thailand for a few years now. Where were you before that? We were in Laos, Bing Chan, Laos. Now, there's a good chance that there might be many viewers who couldn't even find that on a map. <laughs> Tell me about Laos. Laos is a very small country. It's the only uh, landlocked country in uh, Southeast Asia. Yeah. Um, it's um, to the east of Thailand and west of Vietnam. Okay. And you were pretty young when you moved there, right? Yeah, I was, I was three years old when we moved there. Amazing. Now, Todd, uh, just to be a little bit personal here, I see a little bit of redness around your eye. Can you please describe to me what happened there? Oh, that happened quite recently. Um, we were having a fireworks party for New Year's, and basically uh, we were lighting off the grand finale, the biggest shell, yeah. and it came up and hit me in the head. Wow. And I was in the hospital for a few days. So, Amy, that must have been a fairly frightening time. Yeah, for sure. Um, very scary. But at the same time, you know, knowing that God had called us here, we knew that God was in it somewhere, and we just had to look for him. Where was he in it? Um, and actually, Tyler's strength and calm during that time, you know, he wasn't all panicking and upset. His first words were, somebody pray for me. Please pray for me. Is that right? You know, and just... Um, I think that helped me, but just the assurance that God is in it somewhere. We just have to look for Him. Yeah. Yeah. So, Amy, how many years now have you, as a family, been living in Southeast Asia? Almost 13. 13. Yeah. So, most of your ministry has been overseas. Yes. Yeah. Tell me, what is, the, what is the most challenging thing about mission service for you? What's, what's the most difficult thing? Mm. I think my answer would have been different 10 years ago. It would have been something related to food or language or something. Right. But now, I think really the hardest thing for me is just the distance from family. Yes. You know, distance from our parents and, and um, nieces and nephews and having the, inf you know, the influence of grandparents on how to raise kids and suggestions on how to raise teenage boys. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, I think just distance from family is the hardest. Yeah. And what's the most rewarding thing? most rewarding thing is just seeing people light up when they really experience God. When, they, when they've had God touch them in a personal way in their life and the way it transforms their life is just unbelievable, unexplainable. Yeah. Definitely worth it. Wonderful. And so if somebody was watching this program and thinking, perhaps that could be me, I could be involved in mission service, what would your counsel be? We need you. Okay. We need you. God needs you. Yeah. If you're feeling, we actually had a pastor um, counsel us. We, we talked to him about it. And he said, if you're feeling the call, not many people feel the call. If you're feeling the call, it's got to be from God. Follow it. So if you're feeling the call, come. Wonderful. Pray about it and come. Good. Greg, we're just finishing off some meetings here for the Center for East Asian Religions. What was the focus of the meetings? Uh, the meetings were talking about mission issues and sharing Christ with Buddhists and how to do a better job of that because traditionally um, we've not done a real good job. Uh, why, why, is that? why is that? Well, it's, it's interesting. Really, it's what I've uh, talked to people about it is it's kind of like golf and football. Uh, in football or soccer, as we call it in America, you know, there's two teams and it's a controversy. But with golf, it's kind of on your own and you have different things. And so we, we can talk about both playing with balls and playing out on the grass. Uh, enjoying the sunlight, but actually the rules of the, both games are very different. Mm. And when a Buddhist hears about the, uh, Christianity, they hear some things that sound familiar, but so much of it is just a very foreign idea. Yeah. And it doesn't sound very attractive. They don't know how to apply that on a golf course, <laughs> right. which is what their life is like. So that's getting to the essence of the pur purpose of your center, right? Right, yeah. Uh, at our center, the whole focus is just to network with the church around and come alongside, ask what's working, and to kind of guide them in thinking about the questions they should think through and how to be more effective in sharing Christ with people. What are some of the, uh, or, or one or two of the major mistakes that we make when we try to communicate with people from a different cultural or religious background? Well, we assume that because we can you know, speak their language or translate into their language with different things that we have something that we must share with them. And in actuality, 
We have two eyes, a nose, and two ears, which are a lot of sensory input to learn. And we need to come first with the learner's attitude to understand what are the needs and what are the perceptions of the people, and then how do I show Christ to, to meet them on the same ground? Right. Yeah. So often we come with our own package of what we think they need rather than listening first, is what you're telling me. Yeah, exactly. We have preconceived notions that because it's truth, therefore it must be relevant to them. Right. And But really, present truth, relevant truth, is everything we know to be as Adventists, but also we need to make sure that it's it's actually touching a, a, a spot that they, they also understand is a need that they have to fill. Right. Yeah. So, Greg, for people who want to find out more information about the center, where do they find that? Well, a great place to look is at the AdventistMission.org website. Well said. And, uh, <laughs> and, of course, just add the prefix. Instead of the www, just add C-E-A-R for the Center for East Asian Religions. So, E-E-A-R, AdventistMission.org. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you, Amy and Tyler and Greg, for sharing with us today. Yeah, thank you. And please remember the Center for East Asian Religions and the tremendous challenge that they face. And pray for missionaries all over the world. Um, sometimes frontline mission can be exciting and rewarding. Other times it can be discouraging. And it's, it's very encouraging for them to know that there's people praying for them. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> Welcome back to Ayutthaya, Thailand. And next up, we talk to General Conference Treasurer, Pastor Bob Lemon, about the Give Them the Keys initiative, empowering young people for mission. Imagine young Seventh-day Adventists turning the world upside down for Jesus. Choosing, owning, and implementing life-changing outreach projects. Please support the 2015 General Conference Session offering and help thousands of youth-driven mission projects around the globe. Give them the keys. Give them the keys is, uh, I believe, a new philosophy in terms of how do we engage young people in the mission of the church. Right? We are going beyond the notion of we have a plan and this is how you can participate in the plan. We are moving on to tell them God has entrusted you with gifts through the Holy Spirit. Every one of you is gifted through the Holy Spirit. Now, we want you to prayerfully engage that spiritual giftedness with the needs of your community. Too many times we put the pause button because we say they are too young, wait till they're a little older, so we press the pause button. But we shouldn't. We should let them go and come alongside them and get them involved. The young people are where uh, the church needs to put its emphasis and not just say they're the future of the church, they are the today of the church. And so we said this will not only be used for them, but they will make the decisions on it. Now the way it works is that we uh, we would like to encourage uh, the division or the union level uh, to set up a committee made up of at least 75% of young people and or younger, 25 years old or younger. Uh, can be teenagers and early teens, so that they become involved and they are uh, with them in the committee. We want to encourage them to be creative, come up with new novel ideas for evangelism and outreach that have never been done before. The young people can say, one of the things we've had in the past that's a problem is, well, this will be part of the money, but there must be some matching funds or something. We would be glad to have the divisions, the unions, and the conferences and missions match some of the money, but it gets held up when it's that or the local church because, well, we don't have the match, so we can't apply for the funds. In this particular case, uh, the committee will decide how, but we do not want any restrictions that say if you have a good idea coming from some young people uh, that, well, if you don't have the matching funds, you can't get out of this. It's, it's to be used by them to do outreach and bring people to Jesus. We do not want to limit them to one or two. If there are five in, a ch in this group that they think they can go out and reach out to the community, go for it and we want to encourage them if it is an ongoing project to continue to support it. 
with the union funds and put aside a budget for it. But this offering is going to be the one that launched them into beginning that. And we are really encouraged because we know young people are waiting to be able to use that wonderful energy and creativity for the Lord. So come together, regions of the world, uh, with your youth leadership or administrative leadership of your division, come together. Young people, reflect on the needs of your community and prayerfully work out ways in which through your giftedness you can reach out and pursue the mission of the church. So it, it's giving them the keys, it's giving them the initiative under the jurisdiction, under the umbrella of the working of the Holy Spirit. I'm here with Bob Lemon, who is the treasurer of the World Seventh-day Adventist Church. And Bob, we just saw that video about the General Conference session offering, Give Them the Keys. What can you tell us about that offering? Well, you know, every General Conference session we take offerings that are for special projects. But we decided this time that not only would we take it for the young people, and I'm talking about 25 and under, not uh, uh, many of us 45 or more think we're still young, but uh, that they would be able to use the offering for projects and things that would reach people for Christ. Okay, before we even get to that, there may be people who don't know what a general conference okay. session is. So every five years, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has a world gathering where major decisions are made, and at that time there's a very special offering taken up with given a special emphasis. So that's what we're talking about right now. So again, um, why young people? Why, why this offering this time? Well, you know, often we say young people are the future of the church, but the reality is young people are the church of today. And uh, what we want to do is empower the young people. We want to be able to give them not only uh, the ability uh, to do things, but also the funding that can help do that. And I think a lot of times we hear ideas from young people, we'd love to do this, we'd love to do that, and then when they go to ask for permission to do it or whatever, then that's the answer they get, there's no funding. So this is set up, so how will this actually work in terms of uh, how they get the money? Okay. Uh, the funds are actually taken up worldwide from all of our churches uh, on several Sabbaths leading up in the Sabbath of the first Sabbath of General Conference session. Uh, we then track how much came in from each division, each area of the world, each territory, and uh, two-thirds of the money will go back to that area to use, and one-third plus all that's taken in San Antonio on the two Sabbaths will be divided equally among the territories, and then they will use that for young people, with the young people making the decisions as to how it's to be used. So as a young person, um you know, this sends a certain message, well, as a young person, when I was a young person, it sends a certain message that, that we have a role to play, and maybe we haven't always sent that to the young people. Um, as a church leader, how do you see this impacting the lives of young people in terms of their relationship with God and, and their relationship to the people that they live and work with every day? Uh, from personal experience as well as watching others, there's nothing that gets you more involved with the church or with God in a spiritual way than going out and actually doing the work. And we have a tendency to say, well, we've planned this for you and planned that, but let's let them do the planning and let's, them make, let's let them make the decisions as to how it will be done. I, I know when I see young people who actually get involved in something, it really does strengthen their spiritual relationship with Christ and, and there's nothing like being asked a question as to what you believe to get you back in and saying, you know, <laughs> let me make sure I've got that right. I thought I knew. Um, if you had a message for people out there as to how they could uh, support the offering and support young people, what would you say to them? Uh, I think, you know, one of the most important things in finishing the work of reaching people for Christ is to support our young people. We can turn in the offering through the local church and through, but you can also donate directly to the General Conference offering, uh, but we need to make this high profile and we need to make it really say something and really do something. It's not just a token thing of saying, we want to see great results from this. Thank you very much, Bob. 
you know, to those of you out there, if you really want to support this offering, you can also go to AdventistMission.org and make a donation online to the Give Them the Keys offering or support it in your local Seventh-day Adventist church. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is committed to training and equipping its young people for service. Our next stop is Bangladesh, where a portion of your 13 Sabbath offerings this quarter will go to help a university to more effectively reach out and help the community with their health needs in this very challenging, poor and needy country. Another year, and it's graduation time again at Bangladesh Adventist Seminary College, or BASC for short. The school has been operating in the outskirts of Dhaka since 1969. Here, countless students have graduated to serve both God and their nation. Graduation is a special time for students and parents. As the graduates prepare to march down the aisle and receive degrees, many of them are thankful for more than just academic education. Eddie Joydor is such a student. She came to Basque from a non-Christian background, and as she interacted with friends and teachers at school, she noticed something different about the people here. My teachers behave and teach with a different attitude. They care about us and our development as people. The students in this campus also pray in a different way and it makes this campus a very special place. Eddie's interest in the Bible grew and she began to study and pray. Her biggest fear was to acknowledge her new faith. She did not want her family to be ashamed or socially embarrassed because of her faith in Jesus. So she decided to keep this a secret. But after Etty's father and mother passed, she could no longer wait. So she was baptized. Now Etty wants to use what she learned at Basque to help and teach others. Eddie is graduating with a bachelor's degree in office management and a minor in teaching. Her goal is to use her education to be a blessing to others. Basque administrators have plans for an additional school building where they will accept a greater number of students and teach new fields of study. Your 13th Sabbath offering this quarter will assist with the construction that is taking place at Basque. It will also build Timor Leste's first Adventist educational institution. In addition to construction of a church in Lakpahana University and materials for children's programs in the Southern Asia Pacific Division. Please pray for this quarter's projects. Your generous support continues to shed light, love, and hope around the world. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed today's 360 degree view of mission around the world. From here in Thailand, to remote areas such as Timor-Leste, to very populous areas such as Bangladesh, men and women are sharing the light of God's love. And thank you for your continuing prayers and support for mission around the world. It does make a difference. As a small thank you for your continuing support, we'd like to send you a small free gift. It's the Mission Spotlight DVD. You can see the details on your screen. Continue to pray, continue to be involved in mission. For Mission 360, I'm Gary Krauss, and I hope that you can join me next time right here on this program.